Hi, and welcome to our Financial Performance Discipline Series. Today we're going to look at some of the fundamentals in order to determine how we can look at a set of financial statements in order to drive superior financial performance. Our fundamentals start with a very simple formula called return on capital employed. Simply stated, the return on our capital employed is our earnings before interest and in tax or EBIT divided by our net operating assets. In other words, how effective are our net operating assets employed in our organization in their ability to create profitability? We have considered that we need two key components, earnings before interest and tax, and obviously our net operating assets. So just to ensure we have clarity, our earnings before interest and tax obviously is our revenue, less our direct input costs, less all operating expenses, and this is the key issue, it does include depreciation, providing us with a number which is the profitability that those operating assets deliver. The reason why we include depreciation is because we do compare this with our net operating asset, which is ultimately being depleted by the value of the depreciation. So it is only right to include the actual cost of the depreciation against the value of the asset that has been reduced due to the depreciation. We now have to consider how we create our total net operating assets. The first thing we do is establish what we like to call the funding base. And if you think about it, the only two ways that any business can be funded is through the combination of both debt and equity. In our case, the way that we look at funding is we take only the interest-bearing debt, i.e. those liabilities that have a specific carrying cost associated with it. And the combination of this debt and equity provides us with the funding base. So we are now going to separate the funding of the business with how we use those funds. And we'll have a look at that in our next slide. As stated, the first step is we identified the funding part of our business which provides us with the ability to identify the relationship between debt and equity. Or automatically, when you look at the balance sheet in this way and you understand what the debt component is and the equity component is, you can also understand a little bit about the personality of the business. Is this a more high-risk environment or is this a slightly conservative environment? And that really helps you with the ability to identify it in this format. Then we look at the net operating assets, and the net operating assets are essentially all the remaining items in the balance sheet, namely the total assets that are in the balance sheet, less all those liabilities that do not have any carrying cost associated with it. So now we're in a position to compare, first of all, how we fund the business, and then secondly, how we use those funds within the business, which allows us, as you'll see later on, to compare the cost of funds versus the return that we're getting on those net operating assets. And the larger the gap between the cost of the funds and the return that we're getting in those net operating assets ultimately provide us with a way to establish how management's creating value in the organization. And we call that the margin of safety. So how do we do this net operating asset calculation? In order to ensure that we're all in agreement, what I've provided is two forms of balance sheet. On the left-hand side, you see the traditional, basically how most people prepare a balance sheet, pretty much under the generally accepted accounting practice principles. And then on the right-hand side is really how we restructure that balance sheet in order to reflect basically the funding piece of the business at the bottom and then 
how we use those funds, which is our net operating assets at the top. As shown, in essence, the funding part of the business is the combination of our interest-bearing debt plus our equity, and the net operating asset part of the business is really our total assets that haven't changed from the traditional balance sheet. The only difference is that we reduce the value of those total assets with those funds that are essentially provided at zero cost to the organization, providing us with a net operating asset position. So now we have clearly identified how we establish our earnings before interest and tax and our net operating assets. So knowing this, if I gave you only two numbers in this business or in any business, I gave you your earnings before interest and tax number and I gave you your net operating asset number. And I asked you to please show me how you could optimize the financial performance of this business. What would your answer be? Let's think about it. Isn't it really simple? Let's do more of the top with what? Less of the bottom. In other words, all we need to do is more earnings before interest in tax with less net operating assets. And that is the key formula towards our financial performance discipline. Moving the argument a little forward, let's consider another way in which we can look at our return on capital formula. The same formula can be shown as our earnings before interest and tax divided by revenue, multiplied by revenue divided by those same net operating assets that we've just discussed. Obviously, revenue cancels each other out to get back to the original formula. But why is this important? So here's some food for thought. What is more important, the management of our income statement or the management of our balance sheet? What this shows us through our return on capital employed formula, that both the management of the income statement and the management of the balance sheet is equally important. So the way we measure our income statement management is through our earnings before interest and tax divided by revenue. Really what that tells us is the quality of each revenue dollar multiplied by revenue divided by net operating assets. Now, that is a measure of really our effectiveness of our balance sheet efficiency. So, for each dollar of asset that we have, or net operating asset that we have, what is the capability to produce revenue? So how effective is our, let's call it our balance sheet turnover. And in our example, if our earnings before interest and tax is 10 or 10%, i.e. our profitability is 10%, and the effectiveness of our balance sheet is 3, 10 times 3 is equal to 30%, which is our return on capital employed. Let's take some of this theory and put it into action, at least some form of in front of us, we have our financial statements, and what we're going to do is we're going to look at how Roki can work in terms of either identifying where value is created or not. What we do is we just go straight into the one-page financial scorecard, and as you can see, here we have our income statement. Remember, there's our EBIT number, so our EBIT's sitting at 450 million or 450,000, whichever way you want to look at it. There's our balance sheet. And here are our key metrics that actually define our, our performance and value. Today, we are obviously focusing on this item called return on capital employed. So previously, our return on capital employed, i.e. our earnings before interest in tax divided by those net operating assets. Remember how we derived our net operating assets? Uh, provided, us with about, provided us with about 31 cents in the invested dollar. Today, our return has declined to some 24 or nearly 25 cents in the invested dollar. So why has this decline happened? Simply by opening up our Roki window, we notice a couple of things that have happened. We have the two key components that drive Roki, namely our income statement management, as 
measured by our EBIT percentage and the balance sheet management as measured by our revenue divided by our net operating assets. In addition to that, we also have the total value of our net operating assets. So this entity has $1.8 million or $1.8 billion worth of net operating assets that it has deployed in the organization. So first of all, how did it fund those net operating assets? Let's have a quick look. The funding structure of those operating assets comprised of debt of 1.1 and equity of 705, giving us the total $1.8 million. So over here in these measures, in our cash measures, you can see how we've made the structure of the funding between debt and equity. In fact, you also notice that for every dollar of equity, uh, currently, we're holding about $1.57 of debt. So why has our return gone down? And yet, our debt to equity structure has improved. The key reason for our Roki decline is essentially two things. Both, this is where you can see the combination of the two happening at the same time, where we've had a slight decline in our earnings, so going from... Um, 13 to 12 cents in the revenue dollar. In addition to that, our balance sheet efficiency has been in slight decline. Previously, for every dollar of net operating assets, we used to be able to generate about $2.32 in revenue. Now that's declined to $2.04. Okay, so let's do a quick strategy. First of all, what if what if one of our strategies was to, let's say, grow by um, just growth, just volume growth to 30%. Would this improve our return on capital employed or would it actually make it go worse? Well, as we all know, it's difficult to identify the quantum of that strategy. So the way we do this, we simply just press the net change button so that we can communicate very effectively what that strategy has done to our business. The first thing we notice is the net impact. In other words, the difference between our original financials and what our financials would look like if we grew our business by an additional 7%. So that 7% would create $200,000 or $200 million worth of additional revenue. Our gross profit would increase by $75,000. Our variable operating expenses would increase by $26,000. And our earnings would increase by $29,000. So earnings increased by $29,000. And net operating assets increased by $41,000. So if you think about that, um, your, your uh, let's say your marginal earnings versus your marginal net operating assets is very, very effective. In fact, if you really think about it um, briefly, the total cash investment to achieve a $34,000 net profit after interest and tax is $6,000. So would you invest $6,000 to earn $34,000? Absolutely, you do it every day of the week. What we also proving is that our return on capital on average would increase by two cents in the invested dollar. You, due to this decision, you'd actually see an improvement on your return on capital of two cents in the dollar. This is a good strategy if you could grow at the current margins and you could fund that growth. However, let's go back to the scorecard and let's press the undo button to return to our original numbers. At this point, hopefully, we have got some degree of insight as to how we can look at return and capital and use it as, as a tool and a methodology to drive policy and maybe even to drive decisions. Thank you very much. My name is Andre Egin and we use Global Financial Bridge to identify how Roki can help us make better decisions.